I need one of those. Tick. 10 reasons why you may still want to use Flickr in 2022. It's probably better than you think. Hi friends, Matt's here from MrLucker.com. I've been using Flickr since 2008 and I've uploaded 11,000 photos. So jumping straight in at number one, the main reason I think other photographers could benefit from using Flickr is to research the next lens that you buy, the next camera that you buy, or the next film stock that you buy if you're a film shooter. If you're like me and if you watch this channel for all the geeky camera reviews and lens reviews and things like that, we need a source of inspiration to see what the gear can do before we buy the gear. So for me, my number one go-to place before buying a lens in particular is to straight to Flickr and I'll just search by the name of the lens. Often you can find a group relating to that lens. You can then get a good idea of whether or not you like the lens and whether that lens may suit you. Number two, a big one for me, learning and teaching yourself photography. So in addition to researching gear, you may want to learn how to take a particular photograph. So this is a simple example. You might want to understand how people are taking waterfall photos where the water's all nice and blurry. You might be new to photography and you take a photo of a waterfall and there's no blur and you're like, how do they make their photos look nice and blurry and my photo looks less good? <laughs> Because Flickr gives you all the EXIF data below a photograph, the way I taught myself photography was find a photo I liked, look underneath the photo, and I was like, right, it's taken with a medium format film camera. I need one of those. Tick. Taken with a particular lens XYZ. Need one of those. Tick. <laughs> and then I checked the aperture that was used, the shutter speed that was used, and the ISO. I then applied the same camera settings to my existing camera and I could then replicate the blurry water in the waterfall shot to some degree. Do that a thousand times, and suddenly you start to progress your photography, you learn what f-stop is, what shift speed is, what ISO is, and that's, that's how I learned photography. Number three is you are able to upload full resolution photos if you are a Flickr Pro member, such as myself. That then hopefully benefits the viewer because if you go to my Instagram or Facebook or anywhere else, those websites resize your photos down and so you get what's left is a rubbishy looking small res file. If you want to see what, say, a, a new Leica M11 can do with, or with the greatest Apo lenses, you can't appreciate what high-end equipment can do by looking on Instagram or Facebook. Flick will let you do that and anybody that's got a pro account can upload full res files for then other people to then view and appreciate. Number four, if you're a Instagram user and that's kind of all you know, one of the biggest pains with Instagram is you've got to load photos which have got a certain dimension. That means if you're shooting say pano shots or anything long in particular, or even tall photos to an extent, you've either got to chop off the head or the feet and so the final photo that you upload looks rubbish. You've got to resize it down even smaller and put white borders or if they're pano shots, they look particularly rubbish because you've just got a tiny strip. So if you shoot a Haspad X-Pan, one advantage of Flickr is you can upload any photo size in any dimension, as well as being full res. That means you can appreciate photos in any format, not only squares. And then number five, talking of presentation of pano shots, you can sort your photos into groups, galleries, albums, and the actual presentation of Flickr, I think is quite nice. It ties everything together like a jigsaw, so everything keeps its original dimensions and looks pretty to the viewer. If you then want to sort your photos into groups, you can make your own albums for the particular equipment that you use. So then if ever you want to go back to it, it's all in one place. The advantage for you guys or anybody as viewers, if someone is geeky enough like myself to make albums, if you then find a photo that you like, you then scroll down, look for the album, double click the album, and you can then see all the photos shot with the same lens in that one album. So if we take the same example, I shoot a model with the Leica SL camera, the Leica Simlux 50mm 1.4 lens, that photo being one, two, three different albums, the camera album, the lens album, and the model album. I find that really useful for both searching and for filing my own photos for, for future use. Number six, if you hate Instagram because of the annoying algorithm, the beauty of Flickr is there is no algorithm you need to please. You don't need to upload at 10.31 every day and only upload one photo and don't use the same tag word twice or any of the other stupid rules that are on Instagram. Flickr is your album to do what you want with 
like your own portfolio, you can just load anything you want and there's no algorithm or, or bots that's going to mess up what you're trying to post. Linking in with that, number seven, you can post any subject matter and then there's a way to set yourself a filter so to protect kind of under 18s and things like that. I have some photos on Flickr that I can't share on Instagram because they're a bit too nakedy and so I just make a private album and then I make access through my Patreon, for example. There are ways you can then share stuff with like-minded people for those that want to appreciate this type of photography that you do. Number eight, if you pay for the Flickr Pro membership, which is the paid version of Flickr, what I'm kind of talking about the most in this video, as well as being able to upload full res files, you can actually upload unlimited full res files. This now doubles as like an online backup for all of your work. So as I mentioned at the start, I've uploaded 11,000 photos since 2008. And since then, I'm sure I've lost some hard drives over that time where the original photos are now lost. Because I uploaded some of those to Flickr, I've now still got an online record and a backup. So yes, you do have to pay for the pro version, but if you use it to your advantage, you can get your money's worth if you're using it almost like a Google Cloud or um, an online cloud-based service to back up your work. If you're, say, a wedding photographer like myself, another way you could use Flickr is to make albums for your particular wedding. So you could upload all the images to Flickr, send the link to the bride and groom. They can then decide which ones they like. Number nine, we're talking about this on one of the monthly Patreon Zoom calls where we discuss all things photography and put the world to rights. And one of the members was discussing whether or not they should keep paying for a website to share their images. Now you can actually use Flickr as your online portfolio. For me, Flickr is my number one place to share all my images. I then normally upload a small low res version to Facebook or Instagram. If you find Flickr useful for getting inspiration or learning or sharing photos and to use it as an online backup and you don't want to watch the ads from the, the free version and you don't want to pay for say a Squarespace website or one of these other pay websites, you could pay once for Flickr membership and then not pay for say cloud storage or a separate website cost. And like Instagram where you're limited to maybe one link on your bio and that's what you can do, Flickr lets you list pretty much unlimited information underneath every photograph. So for example, when I shoot film, I put all my developing details, times, temps, dilutions, all things like that. And I think it was Flickr that helped me originally start my blog. People asked me to start blogging about the kit I was using. And then later it's probably Flickr again that helped drive me to then start YouTube because people wanted more information. So Flickr is one other way to be found by fellow photographers. And number 10, if you're looking to meet fellow photographers that are like-minded and perhaps use the same equipment as you, by sharing your photos into a particular group where everybody in that group uses the same camera or the same lens, you can suddenly then meet, as I say, like-minded people and make friends online where you all have a common interest in a particular camera brand or lens. So a great example is obviously Leica. Leica is a really tight community and by sharing photos into Leica groups, it's a bit like Instagram with tag words. But the difference with Flickr is they can then see your photos full size. And then as a bonus tip, number 11, if you are a budding blogger or you're a writer and you have your own platforms, say WordPress or something like this, Flickr is really easy, as I say, to embed your photos into WordPress for others to then enjoy. Obviously, it's nice if you can write, but if you can write a piece of work and then break it up with some nice images relating to whatever you're talking about, it's really useful that the interface between Flickr and WordPress in particular is so streamlined. If you're a frequent visitor to MrLeica.com, you'll see I've got written reviews for most of the lenses and cameras that I've ever used film cameras, Leica and non-Leica, uh, and all the different lenses for all the different systems. If you want to see any of those photos full res, all you do is double click the photo in the blog, that will then drills down into Flickr, and then you can see the full res file. If ever you're trying to do research and find something, go to the blog and that's a quick way to find full res files rather than trying to search my Flickr. And so to recap, you've got a free Flickr version, and then you've got a Flickr Pro version. Flickr Pro is where you can upload full res, unlimited, no ads. The limited version, I think you can only upload a thousand images in total over your lifetime and they've got to be a smaller size. I'll put a link below to Flickr if you want more information. But as I say, for me, I use the Pro account and it works out 
roughly one pound per week or one dollar per week. If I've not sold you on Flickr, five common alternatives would be something like number one, Instagram. The benefit of Instagram over Flickr is it has got a much larger user base, photographers and non-photographers. Instagram used to be great for photographers, but now it's going more towards like TikTok style videos with less emphasis on photography. So I think that's slowly kind of going downhill for photography. Number two, Facebook. Now Facebook now is obviously pretty old. And if you're under the age of probably what, 30, there's a good chance you don't even have a Facebook account. Advantage of Facebook though, is if you post an image, you can then share your image to groups that have got the similar topic. For, for me, for example, I post to the, the Leica groups as, a, as an easy example, or the film photography groups. That then sometimes builds up a nice community where people get to know you from your images and they ask questions on various things about your camera and your lens and it's a good way to meet fellow photographers. Number three, Pinterest. I do have a Pinterest account, but I don't use it probably as much as I should. Pinterest is better for for me for, for collecting ideas as maybe like a mood board. So as a portrait photographer, you could look at example photos, save them to a board for a particular photo shoot, beach theme, for example, and you get lots of ideas. You then show the model your board of example photos, and that then gives them some idea of what clothes they may want to bring with them to help give the look that we're going for. Equally, if you're planning a wedding, wedding photography is really popular on Pinterest. And again, you can pick what dress style you want, decor you want, everything. So Pinterest can be really useful if you use it in these certain ways. Number four, 500px. Now this is like a bit of a copy of Flickr. I think it came out maybe five years later and it's very similar in many regards. I've never really used it, but people often are either on Flickr or 500px. I think there are more bots on 500px where you get more fake comments. And then number five, maybe something like Reddit. So if you're a keen photographer and you enjoy kind of all the forum stuff, Reddit's really popular. I just need to get into the rhythm of using it. So that's my 10 reasons why I still use Flickr in 2022 and five alternatives for different types of benefits. If you found this video useful, please smash the like button. As always, a massive thanks to my awesome patrons and see you in the next video.